Hi friends, Suzanne here. Welcome to another Fabricate Friday video. Today's project, I am featuring the, what's it called? In the Wild Designer Series paper and also the stamp set called Big Wish. And I'll bring that out shortly here. It is an absolutely fun stamp set. You can see that I use the word hello in a lighter ink and then friend in a darker ink and it goes so well together. And this is a box that will fold flat if you wish to make a ton of them for Halloween maybe or for uh, giving out chocolate bars to your you know family and friends Christmas time that sort of thing so uh, it goes together like that and the one surprising piece here is a bit of gold foil in the back so it's not a window I mean it is a window but it's not like a you could make it uh, with a window sheet but I did not so this should fit a chocolate bar that is sized six inches by three inches by oh a little over half of an inch so I wanted to share with you how to make it all right for the piece of cardstock I'm using evening evergreen and it is eight inches by eight and three eighths of an inch and on the let's see we'll do the long side first on the long side I'm going to score at half an inch one and an eighth seven and a quarter and seven and seven eighths I'm going to flip it around to the short side, so the 8 inch side, and we're going to score at a half. 3 and 5 eighths, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's the tick right after the half inch. I always count. Uh, 4 and a quarter, and 7 and 3 eighths. 1, 2, 3. That's the tick just before the 7 and a half. So what I'm going to do is something very different. Normally we fold and burnish all of our score lines. So what I have here is a piece of designer series paper and this is two and three quarters by five and three quarters. And what I'm going to do, and this is the In the Wild designer series paper. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my dry adhesive down I'm going to do some X's here in the center. I want to make sure that it is really nicely covered with adhesive. I mean, don't go wild, but so I think what I'm going to do is choose my outside piece. So I think that's going to be that. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to place this right in my uh, rectangle here and I can see because of the score lines all right so now I'm going to fold and burnish now you're gonna see one side here this is the thicker side and there is a thinner side. So I'm gonna show you, that's the reason why I chose this side. So if you have yours upside down like that, make sure that you're using a paper that is directional for that. But this small side is gonna go in here and in here inside. So um, it is not completely even. I wanted to just make comment on that. So the reason why I chose this side to be the front is because it wraps around and covers that small piece. So hopefully you will understand what I'm doing. So this is directional, so this is gonna be the top and this is gonna be the bottom. I'm going to flip this over now and I will adhere my gold paper. 
but this piece is six by three. So we're gonna put this right in the center and it is pretty much going to cover that whole panel. So six by three of a foil, or um, I was thinking about this too, if I had uh, glimmer paper or sparkly paper, whatever paper you wanna use is up to you. So that went on the inside. All right, so now I'm doing this so out of uh, proportion because I'm gonna bring in my trimmer now. And we are going to, all right, so this feels so uh, weird doing this out of order, but what I wanna do is from the first score line, so this score line, I want three quarters of an inch all the way around. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use that, my folded edge, and I'm gonna line it up at my three quarter inch. And I am going, and it's just super easy if you can draw a line with a pencil. This is how I found it the easiest. Uh, I'm going to use this score line that we didn't fold uh, up to the three and a quarter inch here. And then I'm just going to draw a pencil line. Now, if you felt confident enough, you could certainly uh, cut at this point, but I do not feel confident enough. So you can see my score line here, and I'm using this line here to line everything up, butting it up, closing, making my pencil mark. And then, I think this is the hardest part, <laughs> folding. Uh, I'm using this score line here to line up with my three quarter mark. And then I'm just gonna pencil line there. So this way, I don't really have to measure. So I'm gonna put my um, cutting, my trimmer here, <laughs> and I am gonna put it sideways. And now all I have to do is line up. Now you can line up some things, but I need to see kind of where my uh, three quarter inch mark is, which is right there. I'm cutting through two page papers and adhesive. So it's okay if you go over that a couple of times. So for me, that was a little easier and I can, if I'm off, I can just um, run the eraser after. So here is my little score line here. I can line it up at three quarters of an inch. I kind of know what I'm doing, but there. And there's a little line here and I will zoom in and just use a pointer right here on this trimmer. So I can see what I'm doing, but I oftentimes when I film for uh, YouTube, I don't want to get my head in the way. So for me, it was just a lot easier for me to have a guideline. And I, I, this is one of my favorite sayings right now. You do you, whatever you want to do. <laughs> the nice thing is I can, uh, I mean, and we can still line up the, these score lines on the trimmer, but I don't really have to think. I like that. Sometimes when you're crafting, you just know that you're going to be accurate. So this is my accuracy. And again, you could put a window, a clear acetate window sheet or something uh, in behind at this point if you wanted after you get everything cut out. I did not choose to do that. All right, so here is my white eraser. It does not harm the paper. All right, let's pop it out.
I need a scissor. I didn't do so well right here. There you go. Oh, and one more. There we are, everyone. Woohoo! So you can use this on another project. It just has that evening evergreen. Uh, but it's lovely. Okay, so now we're going to finish the box. The end piece we are going to remove completely. And here we're going to remove it completely. And then uh, what we're going to do is remove this section completely. So these two rectangles here. Then I'm going to cut up and then up on this square. I'm gonna cut that extra tab out and then I'm gonna wedge for the tabs here. Those are gonna hold your uh, chocolate bar in place. I'm also going to wedge this guy out. So wedge out, cut up, cut off, and then wedge the little tabs. So, uh, and trust me, this will, we didn't uh, fold and burnish because I forgot. You guys are gonna fold and burnish before you trim, but you can see that was easy enough to uh, burnish. So I'm gonna cut this whole section off and then we are going to leave the um, flaps at, for the, the top. So it's gonna be exactly the same on the whole entire side. I like this idea of a uh, you know, putting a chocolate bar in there, but then also what you could do is, um, you know, put a pitcher or a extra wish on the inside so that the, per the recipient could have like a little bit of a diorama. They would save this box, in other words, they just wouldn't recycle it. I know that this side is gonna get taped down. I'm not putting adhesive on this side because it is longer and I just want to cover this guy completely. And then that way, my chocolate bar is not gonna get stuck inside. Because how horrible would that be, trying to get a chocolate out of a box and you've adhered it to the inside? That's just torture. <laughs> okay, so now I'm gonna fold it. Then I'm gonna fold this portion up all right, so let's fold those tabs in, fold the lid in, and sometimes it will catch on that gold paper, but that's okay. I'd rather have the gold paper in there. Let's hope you remember to burnish. <laughs> there we go. It's coming along now. All right, so that is pretty much the box being made. We're gonna get out our Evening Evergreen ink. This die cut comes from the Stitched So Sweetly dies. It's this one right here. And again, one last time, I'm gonna use the Biggest Wish stamp set uh, hello friend because I think that that is perfect so what I am going to do is have ink up with the evening evergreen paper uh, ink really well I'm going to stamp off and I'm just gonna test it yep so that's the nice thing when you're using a 
uh, ink like this, a dark ink, you can stamp and then use the second inking and that's called generational stamping. So it's a lighter shade of that so that I can come in with the word friend, ink it up full strength, give it a second, Ta -da! Now I could have used a another color. I could have used a gold. I could have uh, done a whole bunch of different things. For this guy, I used opals, uh, opal rounds. I find that when I use the opal rounds, it takes on the color that of the of the product that I'm using. And one little trick here to adhere this die cut to the box, I am just going to use my, I call these the bones, bones of your dimensional sheet. So I think they're about three, three long. So I am going to adhere right close to the edge. So again, my chocolate bar that I'm gonna put in here is not going to be uh, stuck in there. And the reason why I don't have a chocolate bar in these boxes, you guys, is because I am really trying to lose some weight. And if I um, have chocolate in my house, then I will eat it because I have no self-control. And I hope everyone can can just imagine that there's a beautiful chocolate bar in there. <laughs> and then what I did for this one is I used uh, uh, the extra piece and I cut out some little fleurs here. I also did that with this one. I die cut this fancy, I think this is supposed to be a monster uh, tree. I think that's what they're called. Uh, so what I will do with these guys is I'll bring out my mini Stampin' Dimensionals. In case you guys haven't used the minis yet, they're just, I, I, I bought one package and it stays with me for a while. Um, I only use it on the smallest bits of things, but it is nice to have. They are small. And hopefully they will hold up. All right. So because this these do have a little bit of gold on them, I don't think I need to put um, embellishments. But you never know. Who knows? Let's see. Uh, this is so cute. I dig it. I'm digging it. What it does need is Wink of Stella. That's so cute. I love it. Okay, Wink of Stella. Here we are. So I'm going to put a little bit of Wink of Stella on the flowers here. And I will go over the big hello and see how that looks. Try not to smudge the ink, Sue. Wink Estella is pretty good. It doesn't use, it can move the ink, but if you're careful and you've let your project dry, it might be okay. Just like I'm doing here very gently. It's a subtle difference. So <laughs> here are my final chocolate boxes. You can see all the supplies I used today listed below in the video's description section or in the supplies section of my blog. The links will take you to my amazing online store and you can check out uh, 
how to order them through there. And I would, I very much appreciate you ordering from me um, if you get inspired. And I, I am trying to make a milestone year. So every little bit helps. Thank you very much if you are considering it. So thanks for watching and bye for now.